Hello, welcome to the second video that I'm doing for this channel. Uh, listen, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm a guy with a one cheap light. Uh, I appreciate you bearing with me as I try to figure out this process. I, if you'd like to know my goals here, it's simply to talk about comics, craft, and market. Uh, it's something I care about a lot, mostly the craft, not the market that much. I have to care about the market, but uh, talk about them in a sane and rational way where the goal is to actually maybe arrive at some helpful fixes if we can. So <clears throat> I wanted to talk about today uh, what the fear in the market is doing to us out here. So this week alone, there's been a lot of hope. Uh, three three high profile uh, comic book professionals of different stripes, retailers, uh, creators, who have come forward and said yeah, things are not working. Can we please talk about this? Here's my suggestion. I don't know if any of them necessarily have dialed it in fully. Everybody has their own lens, obviously, but it's good that people are talking about these things. It, it <laughs> there's not going to be a solution unless we actually put our heads to it and try to figure it out. The fear is maybe self, self perpetuating at this point, but just very dangerous. And it's dangerous for this reason. The ecosystem falls out of whack. You know how some people hate mosquitoes. They'll, they'll, it's a hot summer night. You're getting bit by mosquitoes and somebody says, what, why do mosquitoes even exist? I hate these things. And then, the smart guy jumps out and says, oh, well, they're actually an essential part of the ecosystem. Without them, <laughs> this food chain falls apart. Uh, these plants don't get pollinated somehow. Whatever. Listen, obviously, I'm not a scientist. Uh, but that's comics. Once you knock something out of the food chain, the entire ecosystem is disrupted, and there's a, a scramble to survive, right? So at the moment, all the fear in the market is prompting some retailers to go pull list only. Uh, if you're not a Wednesday warrior, as they say, and you don't buy your comics at a comic shop, pull list only means those stores are not taking a chance on anything. They're not putting uh, new books on the shelf based on hunches. They're, they're, they're only ordering what their customers have told them, we want this, please order it. That's it. Here's how the food chain falls apart. I work in creator-owned comics. No disrespect to my colleagues who work in uh, corporate comics, but I need them f so that customers can trip over what I do, decide I'm cooler than them, and become a fan of what I do. So Marvel and DC have, obviously, many thousands of fans, uh, regular reader hobbyists who come to the store every Wednesday. Maybe they have a pull list, but they also look at everything on the shelves. They're excited in theory. There's not a ton of excitement in the market right now, but you get what I'm saying. <clears throat> they look at everything on the shelves and they trip over a book like mine. In a perfect world, they put down the issue of a force or whatever the hell and say I'd prefer to spend my dollar on this now I don't expect them to take my book over a 20 year Spider-Man habit I don't expect that but books like mine get the most amount of promo from being seen on shelves once you take that, hey, we're taking a chance on, th on books. We're, we're buying minimal orders for the shelves, but we want to make sure that we have uh, something for everybody. If you come into our store, uh, we want you to trip over something you've never seen before. Once you get rid of that, it becomes very difficult for creators like me to reach new people. Now, maybe you are hearing this and you're saying, hey, Patrick, respectfully, I don't give a shit if you die. I don't, so what if people don't read your books? I'm still going to get my Spidey Man. Okay. Respect. <laughs> I like Spider Man too. But here's the deal it affects you like this. If there's no me anymore, then 
where do editors for the big two find their new talent? So think about this for a second. If we go pull list only, uh, people like me are knocked out of the box. If the indie market is weakened, then creators are going to go to publishers that they know that they can get a page rate for, for the artist at least, which is going to undermine purely creator-owned, i.e. back-end deals. So <clears throat> you're going to uh, see everybody having a piece of their property owned by somebody else. Now maybe you're saying, hey Patrick, it's me again, the guy that doesn't give a shit if you live or die. I like Spidey Man. I don't give a shit about creator-owned problems like having to go to six different publishers and all of them own a portion of your work and uh, maybe those publishers go out of business holding the, the, the ownership of your work and maybe the ownership of your work goes to a holding company that you can't even get somebody on the phone I don't give a shit about your life, Patrick. I don't give a shit about indie creators. Die. Okay. Respect. <laughs> but here's the thing. If there's no indie infrastructure and it's a race to the bottom in terms of talent because once everybody's going to back away from back-end deals, they're going to go to where they can get a page rate, but those page rates are going to be by necessity lower and lower as the market can't sustain paying for great artists. Okay, we're now left with bad indie books, a weakened creator-owned infrastructure, and this is how it impacts you, Spidey Man. Editors are not going to have a farm system. Now, I am very dedicated to creator-owned work. I prefer not to see what I do as a farm system. But... That is how some editors see it. And there is no, no matter, how, no matter how hard they try, there is no replacing knowledgeable comics professionals. You cannot replace them with screenwriters. You can, I mean, you can literally replace them. You can give those screenwriters and uh, television writers and uh, essayists and whatever bullshit. You can give those people comic book creator jobs. They can call themselves comic book creators, but the product is diminished. The art is not up to par, and I don't mean the artwork. You'll notice this is only writer problems, right? No editor says, hey, I noticed um, you're a good graffiti artist. How would you like to draw comics? Because they know that it's a specific labor-intensive work that you have to dedicate your life to. But... With writing, <laughs> there's editors that go, yeah, 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 listen, uh, you just type a lot, right? <clears throat> so we got a lot of assholes who type a lot. We're going to give this one to, uh, you know, the, the, the guy who writes for what National Review. I mean, actually, they wouldn't do that. But they, they say here, they, they, they were giving us the essayist from the Atlantic. So weakened indie means no farm team for the quote-unquote majors which means that they're going to be calling talent up from non-comic spaces even the most ignorant to the art viewer of this channel will eventually be able to tell the difference between a book written by a comic book writer and a book written by a person who is moonlighting as one in between jobs writing for the charmed reboot and the just the 10 of us reimagining you understand there is a difference it is called a craft and it is different so you are going to get shit product you're going to get bad books the market is going to get weaker and weaker. This is bad. It's, it's, uh, we're going to tumble down into something if we're not careful. So I don't begrudge the retailers. Once again, this is retailers. I'm talking to you so you, I don't get this angry fucking email. 
I fully understand why you're at where you're at. But whether whether it is a huge initiative like nothing we've ever seen on the part of the indie publishers doing a push or whether it is a radical re- revamping of the big two system, something has to change very quickly or we are going to find more and more stores who are unwilling to take chances and we are going to see a very diminished landscape here. You will eventually notice, I promise you. We are currently on, we're, we're tumbling down a mountain and it's just a matter of time before there's nothing to grab onto and the, our momentum is too fast and we're going to splat against the bottom. We have to get retailers' trust back. You notice, retailers, this isn't just because I'm scared of you. I'm taking it entirely off of you. We have to get their trust back. Bottom line. 